Welcome back everyone to my let's play of the Final Fantasy Adventure. Last episode, Draven ended outside of Carrie's cavern. Carrie was the fiend who froze the, the town of Lore to include uh, the sage uh, Chiba. Chiba's the only one who knows where to find the Excalibur, the magical sword that uh, Draven's going to need to confront Julius, now that Julius has the power of the mana tree. He uh, put uh, Badger under some kind of spell and uh, had Badger use the pendant and cast her own magic spell to reverse the waterfall. Uh, so now he is able to head up to the mana tree. And we unfortunately were knocked down and uh, ended up in a village ish and kind of lost our resolve. But uh, Bogard, the uh, old uh, Gemma Knight, he basically got us uh, back, uh, back on our horse. Well, actually, back on our cho chocobo to walk on water, and uh, sent us in the direction of Chiba, but Chiba, uh, he was not at Wendell anymore, he went down to this lore to help the people there, but like I said, ended up, he, had, he ended up getting trapped by uh, the ice. So we have to uh, save him by defeating Carrie here in this uh, ice uh, cavern. Because it's an ice cavern, there's going to be a lot of puzzles that involve uh, this slippy ice up here. Uh, basically, when you step on it, you'll be uh, transported in a direction. It's kind of like the minecart, where you'll be uh, sliding around or just taking a direction. Uh, and uh, like the minecart, where you had to knock switches. Uh, sometimes uh, in this thing, when we're riding the uh, ice, we'll have to uh, get off by uh, wrapping our whip around one of those posts. So that could be like a really annoying puzzle. Uh, but just like the minecart puzzle, uh, if you miss uh, grabbing a chain or flipping a switch in terms of the minecart, you just basically end up uh, doing like a loop, a circle, around. So, it just can be uh, annoying when you have to repeat uh, rooms several times. More hopping enemies, but I guess this makes sense of uh, these hopping rabbits. I guess the spring hopping enemies make sense too. Luckily, these guys don't turn us into Moogles. There will be another popping enemy a little bit later on in the game that turns into Moogles. It's really annoying. Annoying popping enemies. So, speaking of bunnies, my, uh, when I was growing up as a kid, my mom had a rabbit named Hoppy. A little white rabbit. We got, we got our lit magic here, which is really good against those cyclone monsters. And then for the uh, eye monsters, just put on your blood sword. And, uh, Get him away and restore your hit points. There we go. Get on over more. Now, uh, coming up, we're going to uh, get to a junction. Uh, we can go either to the north or to the south. Uh, the south uh, is kind of quicker. There'll be more backtracking on the south, but the tracking, the backtracking that we'll be doing will be like uh, sliding on ice, so it's faster. Well, if we head up to the north here, break the wall from Attic, we have to go through more rooms. We don't have to do any backtracking, but there's more rooms, so I'll point out where the... If we went north, we would end up at. This way, it's gonna cost us uh, two keys, but we have some skeleton monsters up here in this next room that we can get some keys back. So, we will get lucky, to, and uh, one of them actually will drop our key. There we go. And these blobs, they can actually be defeated by our uh, flame whip. Not that we really need to defeat them, because they only drop Maddox. We don't need Maddox anymore. So this floor, uh, the gimmick is, uh, there's uh, two paths of ice. One on the outside, one on the inside. The inside takes you clockwise around the center room. The outside takes you uh, counterclockwise. We want to get into the inside. Unfortunately, we can't reach that pole from there. So we just have to backtrack a little bit here. And uh, we'll backtrack a few more rooms, uh, sliding on the ice, and that'll take us to that. If we would have went north, we would have broken that wall thematic. Uh, we would end up in this room here. Well, like I said, we would have had to go through more rooms to get here. So now we just want to hop on the inner uh, ice passage and slide off. And we're just going to stay on this one. We don't have to luckily jump off at all. But future puzzles will be like that. We'll have to slide off. But this one's just going to end us uh, nicely at this area here. Now if we jump back onto the ice, we'll uh, end up back at the beginning where uh, I jumped on the inner circle. Uh, but 
this looks suspicious, this wall here. So we'll just equip our uh, Morningstar, bash down the wall. And that'll take us on to the uh, next level. Where, uh, we're going to be able to find uh, one of two healing uh, ponds. And uh, get another healing item. So to the right is the way we want to go, but before we go to the right, we're going to defeat this enemy here, and we're going to head up to the north, we're going to break that wall up there, uh, and that will uh, take us to the healing pond, and then we're going to head to the left, because um, through a few rooms over there, uh, we'll end up getting a treasure, an elixir. Elixir heals your magic point and magic points and hit points to full, so really good item to use. There's a place you can farm them on the out wall, on the um, outside world. Uh, we could have seen it, but I didn't make a. Uh, well, we went north to go to Wendell. Uh, if you go uh, east, like two more screens, there's an island, uh, and there's a bunch of uh, seahorses there. If you just defeat the seahorses, the uh, elixir will appear. Just like if you defeat the rabbit here, elixir will appear. So, but unlike this room here. Uh, that, that one keeps respawning, you just uh, save the game, then restart, and uh, you can respawn that elixir. So you can get a whole bunch of elixirs, but you don't have to worry about that. You get enough uh, healing stuff uh, along the way. A lot of enemies dropping stuff. Elixirs are good to sell. Uh, they sell for close to 700 gold. Uh, high 600s, I think 690. But I've never really sold uh, elixirs, because they're in that like uh, too good to use club, you save them for the end of the game but you never want to use them, uh, so you end up not using them even though you save them the whole time. So. Yeah, these, uh, these, these Cyclone guys seem to be immune to pretty much everything, so that's why our Lit Magic finally comes in uh, use. Not strong against that. I mean, what's, what's coming down? So, just pull out our Lightning Spell and hit it up. Uh, lightning deals a lot more damage to enemies than firewood, but it doesn't have that homing property that the fire does. And it seems to have a larger startup time, which is going to be really annoying because later on we'll be fighting these, um, those, uh, 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 those, uh, sea dragons. Uh, and, uh, the problem with them is, uh, they shoot with fireballs pretty, pretty quickly. And so while you're charging up, if they hit you, uh, they'll knock the lightning bolt uh, off the course. So, yeah, not good. And I can't, uh, yeah, see if I had the fire, we could just aim. I'm terrible aiming. This is why I guess I don't play shoot up games, shoot ups Well, you like to watch people play shoot up games. If you like those shooting games, uh, check out uh, Shooting Game Weekly. It doesn't do weekly, but, uh, they feature a whole bunch of different type of uh, shoot shooting games. Uh, running guns, spaceship ones, shoot 'em ups. Alright. Duck enemies here. Maybe the last duck enemy in the fight. And duck with a sword. Hm. Captain Duck. And more rabbits. But we're gonna get into uh, another one of these. Uh, Ice type puzzles. This is just a tiny one. Unfortunately, I gotta shoot these things here. And like I said, I have bad aim. And we want to get off into the middle here. So we're gonna have to grab one of these uh, things. Finally, we got one of the posts. Now we just have to hit this thing. Alright, we finally got it. Nice. We'll equip our blood sword to uh, take this guy out. And once we're in here, we can. Uh, Hit that other uh, post, uh, that other uh, tile, and that uh, breaks the ice circle. And that allows us to get off the ice circle and step on this other tile, which opens up the door, and we can proceed onward. So this looks like a weird puzzle room, but that's nothing really important. Just beat the snowman, and we don't have to worry about anything. You think you'd have to use the mattock to, or the morning star to smash some stuff, but nope. You just have to beat this. Uh, we don't even have to beat snowman, just head all over. But there we go, we take him out. And we got these guys back again. The mummies, but the mummies weak to fire, so we can use our flame. Lizards, not so much, but they are weak to lightning. So, a lot of weapon switching in here. 
We sold our wear axe though, because, eh, we're not really going to be using that for fighting. And this is the, like I said, the worst puzzle, uh, the annoying puzzle. Uh, once again, we're going to have to ride the uh, inside uh, ice passage. But this time, uh, at the end, we're not going to be able to just slide off. We're going to have to uh, rip uh, a post as we're sliding around the ice. Which is not fun. Hop on in. And we slide around again. Dunk. Let's uh, take out these guys, get some experience. Luckily, the boss ain't too, too bad uh, in this area. Like I said, uh, the boss carry functions uh, very similar to uh, the Cyclops who had the Morning Star, where she will go up and down uh, the left side of the sc uh, the right side of the screen, and then uh, stop at three different levels, and then either uh, make a sprint across to the uh, left side of the screen, or just uh, stay on the right side and shoot fireballs, or uh, not fireballs, icicles. Keep thinking it's fireballs because she's. Was the Fiend of Fire in Final Fantasy 1. Just I don't know what she is. I guess, like I said, she could be the Fiend of Fire. She's just taking fire away, but she shoots icicles. But uh, the good thing is, those icicles that she'll be shooting at us, they can be uh, removed uh, with the flame, uh, the flame uh, whip here. Sort of how the, how the Morningstar was able to destroy the fireballs that the Chimera shot at us in uh, Glaive Castle. So let's hop on this slidey track here. To the north we have uh, another uh, healing pond. I'm gonna use a key though to get to it. Oh, might as well heal up, because uh, once we solve the puzzle to the left, we'll be going to... Uh, we'll be getting close to carry, so... So this is, like I said, the annoying thing, you have to whip and grab one of those uh, ch uh, posts to get off this area, and if you miss, well, you just have to repeat, step back on, hope for the best, there we go. And once we're off, just uh, equip the morning star, and we're going to break the wall down between those two posts. Kind of obvious. And that's pretty much a straight shot to carry from here. We got a few rooms where we gotta do our uh, chain puzzles, though. And a lot of the chains are far enough away that you have to wait for your willpower to fully uh, heal. Oh, those rabbits do turn into moogles. Huh. Totally forgot between uh, when I did this recording and uh, the video and then when I'm doing the voiceover, so. Alright, we are uh, outside. We still have to go back in to end up finding Carrie. We got, like I said, a few more rooms to go through, but nothing, nothing major. Luckily, we won't have to leave this when we defeat Carrie. Uh, we won't have to uh, go back through this cave and just warp us out, so. But, more chain puzzles, but nothing hard. Just hit and swing across, hit and swing across, and keep on heading up. Uh, to the south is a dead end, so we'll be heading to the north. Rabbits first, though. Oh, that's our punch. That's payback for turning us into moogles. Once again, another uh, chain uh, puzzle. And we're on the outside. Time for Carrie. Like I said, uh, she is going to just go back and forth like the Cyclops. And uh, she'll have three different levels. And she'll come across and whip you with the tail. Uh, but uh, we're a little bit. A little bit easier than the Cyclops. She takes, uh, she hurts less uh, than the Cyclops does, uh, and we don't have to worry about that Morning Star hitbox uh, when we're attacking from above. And if we stay over to the left, uh, especially on the top uh, section, the middle section is good too. Uh, you can just stand there, uh, whip the uh, icicles, and she won't be able to uh, hit you with the icicles. You have to really hug the rock on the on the top one uh, to avoid getting hit by her. Her tail has a, a small hitbox to the bottom, so as long as you're a little bit above that, not, that's not going to hit you. Uh, but her upper body can be constantly up here if you're uh, not hugging that rock. But yeah, Carrie falls, is defeated, and that'll end the curse on uh, Loam. 
and it'll also get us a new sword that we're not really going to use too much. So, the ice sword. Head on back to uh, Lorm here. Get some experience here with these easy enemies. We don't have our Chocobo to ride. Remember, we had to leave our Chocobo behind. It was too cold for him here. So get cold where I'm uh, living at. And, uh, the dog is liking the space heater that I put out. Even though I have central heat and keep the temperature uh, constant in the house, I like the warm air of the space heater blowing on when I bring him in from a walk. So, he's on my lap right now, getting petted. Normally I have one of the rats on my uh, lap, but Bub and Bob are running around, doing their thing. Well, Bob's running around. Bub, Bub's the lazy one, he's just chilling. He's probably like, why are you petting the dog instead of me? The dog doesn't pee on you, Bob. Bob is lazy to get off and go to the bathroom. They're litter trained, uh, that's a pretty small you can just litter train pretty easily. But, uh, I guess, you know, when it's time to be lazy and get petted, nah, all your, uh, training goes out the window. But now we get our Chocobo back. We could ride him, but I'm going to, uh, take out these enemies here. Get some extra experience. Like I said, we need the Excalibur to take on Julius, but we also need levels. So, although like around like level 40, you're pretty good to. So we're getting really close to the level that you know you'd want to be at to fight Julius, and we still have uh, several dungeons to go. And the enemies, of course, will be giving lots of experience. But the more levels I grind out here, the less I'll have to grind in between when I beat the game and when I go for the bonus level. Because, of course, in the bonus level, I'll max out my stats. Although there's really too much uh, bonus content for this game, uh, so probably the bonus episode will just probably uh, marry it to the final episode. Just show off the final fight with uh, max stats and best equipment. We will get the best equipment during the playthrough, though. So. We use that trick with the uh, equipment glitch, or the treasure glitch, to force the uh, equipment to spawn. Alright, we're back in Lorm. Very small little castle town. Like I said, we don't have to go over to the left here, because this guy is just a waste of a key. But I want to show off everybody, so we're going to go talk with him anyway. He's going to basically tell us, like, good morning, I think. Wow, good morning. Yeah, so... But, uh, keys are really cheap, so, and we have so much money. We still got a few more pieces of equipment to buy. Uh, we got ice gear to buy, and then we're gonna buy a new spear. Uh, but for the most part, uh, not gonna be buying much, so. Thank you so much. Chip is waiting in the other room. Alright, that door that was frozen, uh, now unfrozen. And we'll go meet Chip in there. And he's gonna give us this key. And tell us where we gotta use it. Go up the wide river by the Ammonite Coast. Go beyond the Ammonite Coast to Float Box. Alright. Use this key at the cave in the Float Box. Alright. We know where the Ammonite is because that uh, the Guardian Ma Master has the legendary sword. I'll tell you the rest when you return with it. Uh, we know where the Amorite Coast is. Uh, it's to the south where we took a north. Dr. Bauer told us to go north to go to Wendell to head south to the Amorite Coast. So we know where we gotta go. Uh, get our Choco back. And head over to that dock. And, uh, that's where we'll end the episode. And we'll be ready to uh, go exploring uh, that Amorite Coast and the float rock area in the next episode. Off these uh, enemies. Yeah, it's back at the beginning of the game. So, the world, like all the other Final Fantasy worlds, wraps around itself. So, you go too far north, it'll wrap around back to the south. Too far east, it'll go back to the west, and vice versa. West to east, south to north. But, still, uh, when you look at the world map, it looks kind of tiny, but uh, when you're actually exploring, it actually is feels pretty big, so, there's all the unique little areas in there. And speaking of unique areas, we'll be exploring that unique area of the float rocks in our next episode. Take care, have a good one, thanks for following along. Bye!